Welcome to our last reflection. It's now Monday, again, grumble, 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 the day after Holy Week has ended. I initially wrote this meditation three years ago, and I want to share it with you this morning. Easter is over. Now what? An American friend of mine who is a pastor in the United Methodist Church in Upper New York State doesn't call what we just had Holy Week. She calls it Holy Hell Week. She has a worship service every day at her church, a different sermon or devotional each day. The church is open multiple times a day for prayer every day. Communion and foot washing on Maundy Thursday evening. Good Friday service in the morning. A walk through the town with the cross in the afternoon. A whole day on Saturday. Two services on Easter. Sunrise service at 7 a.m. Breakfast in the church hall. Another service with communion. By 1 p.m. on Sunday afternoon, she's done. Emotionally and spiritually, she's drained. But what about the early church? Easter is over. Now what? Luke chapter 24, verse 13 reads, Now that same day, two of them were going out to a village called Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem. The women had come back from the tomb, the body isn't there. The angel told them he is risen. They run back and share the news. The rest don't believe them. Peter and John run off. Yep, he's gone. The linen is all folded nicely and everything. Well, some of them stayed in Jerusalem. Cleopas and his companion said, well, we might as well go home. There's nothing left for us here. Everything we thought was going to happen didn't. And they started to walk home to Emmaus. Their faith was so weak that they just left. And Jesus came to them and walked with them and called them foolish for their unbelief. Easter's over. Now what? John chapter 1, 21 and verse 3 reads, I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them. And they said, we'll go with you. Jesus had already appeared to them. It's about a week later, but I still don't think they figured it out yet. They just went back to their old jobs. Easter is over. Now what? The palm branches have all turned brown. They've probably been, been tossed into the compost heap or burned and saved for Ash Wednesday the following year. The lilies are already starting to fade and wilt too. Overdose on chocolate. Marshmallow peeps are getting crunchy. You know, I never really liked those things anyway. But the story remains. An executed Messiah, a humiliated king, a confusing third day. It just doesn't make sense. Christmas is easy. After the presents have been opened and the carols have been sung and the festivities are over, most of us tuck our Christmas spirit you know, you know that cheerful, be nice to everyone because it's Christmas kind of vibe? We tuck it away till next year. After all, we've been jubilant and jolly, or at least a little nicer, for close to a month. And keeping that upbeat, Christmassy kind of attitude can be hard work. But sometimes we ask, why can't it be that way all year long? You know, we love the eight-pound, six-ounce baby Jesus. We love the candlelight and the peace on earth. But what do we do with a sweaty, bloody adult Jesus crying out in pain? With earthquakes and darkness. With a bunch of women and some fishermen saying he's come back to life. With everything we know about nature and human nature and the nature of God completely overturned. The New Testament church did not celebrate Easter once a year. They celebrated it every week, on the first day of the week to be exact. Every Sunday they gathered to commemorate Christ's resurrection, so much that they even renamed it the Lord's Day. Easter isn't over. It's still here. As Christians, it shouldn't be like Christmas all year long. It should be like Easter Sunday all year long. After the resurrection, it's here. 
It's always here. You know, so often we use spring as a metaphor to describe Easter, well, at least in the northern half of the hemisphere. The daffodils are coming up, the brown grass turns green, the whole world comes to flower. Aren't these all signs of the resurrection and new life? But spring is cyclical. The seasons blend one to another. The rains of April leads to the flowers of May, to the cherries of June, to the blueberries of August, to the autumn leaves of October, to the harvest in November, to the frigid snows of January, to the bursting crocuses of March. The resurrection trumps all that. It's something entirely new. The world has been turned upside down. In Paul's words, we know that Christ has been raised from the dead and he will never die again. Death no longer has power over him. Easter is over. Now what? No, it's not. We serve a risen Savior all year long.